Hey everybody, welcome back to Messy Vegan Baker. I'm Christina, and this week we are going to be doing another candy. Dun dun! And I'm actually really excited for this one. Okay, I'm also really nervous. It's another chocolate confection that I used to love, and I don't know, is there anything else I can add? <sighs> nope. So today we're going to be making. Three Musketeers. So I used to love this as a kid. Now, okay, let me know in the comments down below how you used to eat one. And I mean like the big bar. Did you just bite it and eat it? Or did you eat all the chocolate off of it and then eat the nougat in the middle? I'm really curious, because I used to eat the chocolate around and then the nougat. And I don't know, there was just something so satisfying about that. I'm excited because I haven't had these in forever, but I'm also super nervous because I kind of successfully made a nougat last time in my Snickers video, which I will link up above if you wanna go watch that because they were really good and you should definitely make them. <clears throat> so I did research after I made the Snickers to see if there was any, if there were any really good videos or blogs that had any tips on how to make the nougat. So I got some ideas, except my issue was I used the whisk attachment and as I was pouring the sugar in, it was getting stuck on the whisk mostly, and then it like got stuck on the side of the bowl. So I was trying to figure out if there were tips and tricks on how to not hap have that happen, but nobody else seemed to have that issue. So I guess I'm just special. So that's cool. However, uh, I was looking through what kind of recipe I should use to make my Three Musketeers, and I did more research. <gasps> Who is she? I don't know. I actually did research ahead of time. Crazy. But I found a few more different um, recipes and videos on people making nougat, but same thing. They just all magically didn't have that issue. So I almost wonder if it's because my whisk attachment is maybe somehow kind of malformed or something. I don't know. But it's whatever, so I did all the research and it, it gave me a little bit more confidence, but it's still nerve wracking because I just don't know. Also, today's recipe is from not Mark Bittman's How to Make Everything, got you there. It's from, oh, ta-da, this beautiful, beautiful 10 pound uh, toddler monstrosity. That is this wonderful cookbook. It is baking and pastry, and I love it. I got it for Christmas, mostly because it has a giant, well, it has the biggest confection section that I've seen in a cookbook so far. Not only do they have a few nougat recipes, they also have this, hold on, I have to find it somehow. Soft chocolate nougat. So that's the recipe I used. I will have a link to the blog post down below. And full disclosure, I actually made the nougat last night, but I will say the nougat actually turned out very well. There are a few things I want to fix next time, but for the first time, it's awesome. So without further ado, let's get baking. Here's the deal. This recipe is in grams, but I will do the grams and about what it should be in measuring cups and whatnot. Yeah, <laughs> I think that makes sense. Um, in case you don't want to have to weigh everything. So for this Three Musketeers, to make the soft chocolate nougat, you are going to make sure you have everything prepared ahead of time. And I will walk you through what that is. I even have notes so I don't forget this time. You're welcome, editing me. First, you're going to get a nine by 13 inch pan out and I might change the size of this. Last time I looked at it, it's a little too thin for Three Musketeers, like I want it, you know, pretty thick. I might change the size, but get your pan ready. Make sure that you line it with parchment paper and then cover it with oil because this is very sticky and so you don't want it to stick to anything. So parchment paper with overhang on both sides and then lots and lots of oil. And you're gonna set that aside. And then you're going to measure everything out and have it in separate bowls. And I will explain that in a minute. First, oh wait, I guess I actually have to look at this too. <laughs> you are going to 
In a stand mixer, ideally, if you don't have one, hopefully you have a hand mixer. If not, honestly, just go out and get one because you're not gonna be able to do this by hand. So, in a stand mixer, ideally, or in another bowl with a hand mixer, you are going to measure out part of your corn syrup into that bowl as well as your aquafaba. And then I also put a fourth teaspoon of cream of tartar in there and you're just gonna leave it in there. And then in another bowl, you are going to measure out your dark chocolate and your cocoa butter. And then you're going to melt them. You're gonna whisk them together or you can blend them together as this recipe says. And you're gonna set that aside. And then in another bowl, you're gonna measure out your soy milk powder and your confectioner's sugar. And then you're going to sift it into a, another bowl and then set that aside. And yes, you do wanna sift this because if you have lumps, it's gonna throw everything off. And then in your ideally thick bottomed saucepan, if not a saucepan, you are going to measure out the rest of the corn syrup, the granulated sugar, and the water. Whew. And then huh, you're going to make sure that you have your vanilla extract by the mixer. So everything should be measured out and ready to go. Make sure that you have your candy thermometer, which I do recommend testing every now and then and making sure that it's accurate. And if not, knowing how inaccurate it is so you can fix that and like do the math. Also make sure that you have a pastry brush and a bowl of water on the side and you should be good to go. Trust me, the prep makes it worth it because otherwise you're just gonna be scrambling and you don't wanna do that. So you are going to put the sugar, water, and corn syrup on the stove on medium heat. And I turn it up to slightly medium high, like just a little past medium. Mix that mixture until it starts to come to a boil and then you're gonna stop. You're gonna put your candy thermometer in, wipe the sides down so there are no sugar crystals and you're just gonna let it boil and do its thing. And you're going to boil it until it reaches 252 degrees Fahrenheit. So while that is boiling, uh, you're gonna basically just wait and then once it hits about 230 degrees Fahrenheit, you're gonna start your mixer and get that aquafaba and corn syrup and cream of tartar whipping. Um, and I had that, my stand mixer up to almost 10 just to get it whipped and all that fun stuff. Then you're basically just kind of keeping an eye on both of them and watching that whip and that boil. And once the egg whites are whipped to medium peaks, because when you pull it up, it'll keep the peak for the most part, but it might like curve a little bit and that's great. Then you're just gonna stop the mixer and wait until your sugar gets to 250 degrees Fahrenheit. When that happens, you're going to turn your mixer back on and you're going to slowly pour your sugar mixture into the egg whites or the, it's not really egg whites, but you get the point. You're gonna pour it into the stand mixer. And this is something that I, I don't know, everyone else has their whip attachment and they don't seem to have an issue with the candy syrup getting stuck on it. I did, so I switched to the beater extension essentially. And I just had that going because it was a lot easier for me to pour the sugar in without it getting stuck. So once that is all combined, and it will take a little bit of time, you're gonna, this just says until combined, but everybody else that I've watched says to keep mixing it for like three more minutes until it's fluffy. And I definitely wish I had done that because I didn't. And I think that it could have just used a little bit more aeration. So mix it for another three-ish minutes until that mixture is nice and fluffy and I believe it starts to lose its gloss. Then you can stop the mixer. You can uh, take your bowl and you're going to fold in your dry ingredients until it's nice and combined. You're gonna let it cool down a little bit until it's warm to the touch, which for me was basically right away. And then you add in your melted chocolate, you fold that in, and once that is nicely combined, you will notice that it will start to thicken a little bit, but that's good. And then you're gonna dump it into your pan. And I was stupid and like whacked the pan on the counter. I don't know why, like you want those air bubbles. What are you doing? So don't do that. Uh, once you pour it in, you just let it set. Once it's fairly firm to the touch, it'll be a little soft, but once it's mostly firm to the touch, you can cut them up in whatever sizes you want and dunk them in chocolate. And for the chocolate, you can temper it if you want. If you don't wanna do that, you can also do my little 
pack where you have anywhere from a teaspoon to a tablespoon of coconut oil, some chocolate chips or dark chocolate or whatever kind of chocolate you want. Throw it in the microwave in 30 second increments and take it out, mix it every time and then uh, yeah, you can dunk your little candy pieces in there. Your little soft chocolate nougats. You're welcome. Wow, I feel like that actually went really well. I say until I have to edit. <laughs> but yeah, so that brings us to here and now. Uh, so I'm going to get the nougat and dunk them and then we'll taste them. <sighs> <coughs> We're back. Here's a funny story. So, you know how I said you should put it, pour it into a 9 by 13 inch pan, but maybe not because mine was too big, or like my Three Musketeers was too thin? <sighs> Turns out that wasn't a 9 by 13 inch pan. So that's cool. If you make these, pour it into a 9 by inch, 13 inch pan, which is a cake pan. <sighs> I don't know how I've gotten this far in life, honestly. I just... I don't. So that's one issue solved. And next time I'll just whip it more and next time I should have a really good uh, Three Musketeers. I also didn't really want that many Three Musketeers bars. And like I said, they're very thin because blonde. So I ended up just like folding them in half and kind of squishing them together. And then I tried a different way of dunking these because the nougat is soft. And so when I was dunking it, it was kind of like stretching it and it was just a mess. So I tried putting chocolate on a silicone baking mat and then putting the musketeers on top or the nougat on top and then kind of brushing slash pouring chocolate on top of it. So we'll see how that goes. I'll insert here if it was yay or nay. Let's taste these. Ooh, okay, I need a close up on this. Like, <gasps> ooh, she party. Well, okay. a little, a little disfigured, but the texture looks great. There could be a little bit more air put into these probably, but I don't know, they're pretty good. So texture's spot on so far. It breaks like a nougat should. Um, fun fact, I watched this really cool video about nougats, which I will link down below in case you're curious. And there are different kinds of nougats and some are stretchy and some break like this which you want for this one. Um, and it just depends on how much granulated sugar and how much corn syrup you use, which I thought was really cool. But yeah. Okay, let's try it. Oh yeah, it's all coming together. <laughs> wow. Once you get the chocolate on here, that just makes it like, holy crap, that's so good. I also recommend using semi-sweet or dark chocolate because the nougat is really sweet. And I know that the regular candy bar is milk chocolate, so if you want, you can use that, of course. But I kind of like the dark chocolate because it does balance it out, and it brings it down to a point where you're like, sweet, but not where you're like, well, now I have to die because I have too much sugar. Spot on. I love this. Highly recommend making it. I understand that making candy is like a little stressful and scary and time-consuming. However, I will say, once you get the hang of it, it's really fun, and honestly, it's... I never missed candy a ton, but being able to eat it again, my brain is like, yes, we are complete. Veganism is the new future. Like, you don't have to miss out on anything. <sighs> Do I tell you guys? All right, just between you and me. If, yeah, would, I just have to ask it, because I am curious, I have an idea. Do you think, that if I were to make these candies and it was available to you, would you be interested in buying it? Or is that at a point of like, I might as well just make it myself. I'm curious. So let me know in the comments down below. <gasps> it's scary, but I need to know the answer. Cause yeah, that's partially why I've been making so much candy is because they don't really have that coming yet. Sorry, I should stop eating this. Let me know what you want me to make next. If you're new to this channel, hi, welcome. You could hit that like button and that subscribe button. Cause now my new goal is 200 subscribers. We'll get there, I know we will. And if you are a regular to this channel, hi, welcome back. I'm so glad you guys like my shows. Thank you so much for liking and commenting. It's really fun getting to talk to you guys. And uh, yeah, so I hope you guys learned something and or, and or were entertained. And I will see all of you lovely humans next time. Bye. That, no, what am I saying? Whew, I have to get
gather my thoughts, be concise. Losing my train of thought. <gasps> okay, it's fine. Um, I don't know where I was going with that. Nuts. <sighs> that doesn't. Uh, remember, we put on a. <laughs> I could basically have my own uh, language at this point. I don't know what I was going to say there. Enrobe them with chocolate.